guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. It has been a few days since I've actually sat down in front of the camera and filmed a new video for you guys because we were out of town last weekend, so a lot of my videos were pre-recorded, but I'm excited to be back at it and film for you guys today. It is snowing like crazy, so I thought it would be a fun day to sit inside and film. So I don't do a lot of tag videos on my channel, but I saw this tag from Kelly. She actually created it. I'll link her channel in the description box below, and I loved the idea. If you guys are not subscribed, to Kelly's channel, you have to head over and subscribe. She is a cruelty-free beauty YouTuber and she makes a lot of great videos. I just feel like she has the type of personality that I can relate to. Like, I feel like if I actually met her in real life, we would be friends. We could sit down over coffee and chat and I love her videos. I turn them on and it's like I'm hanging out with a friend and I find that I buy a lot of her recommendations or, you know, a lot of the things that she loves, I also love. She just tends to be really practical with her makeup products and her recommendations. She's not like the type of person to tell you to like buy every single new thing, which I love. I've been making more of an effort to like focus on my collection and I feel like her videos really help me appreciate what I have. And I just like her makeup style, her personality, and she has the most beautiful hair in the entire world. I have serious hair envy. So I hope you guys will check out her channel. She really is like one of my favorite people here on YouTube. But the tag she created is if I could only keep one. So basically you go through like the makeup categories and if you could only keep one product from that category in your collection, you share which product it would be. And I thought this was kind of interesting because it's not necessarily your favorite product. Like some of them are my favorites, but some of them are a little bit more practical because even though this eyeshadow palette might be my favorite, which one would I keep? Because I'd be stuck with that one and I'd have to use it like every single time I wore eyeshadow. So I thought it was a little bit of a fun concept. If you guys film YouTube videos or you just want to chat in the comments below about your answers, I would honestly love to hear them. I think it would be so much fun so let me know in the comments below but otherwise let's jump into it starting with face primer if I could only keep one face primer this one actually kind of surprised me but it would have to be the Smashbox photo finish primerizer so I do have oily skin and during the spring and summertime I usually reach for a mattifying primer but I have to say that the Smashbox primerizer has been my go-to moisturizer ever since I discovered it probably at like the end of the summer I haven't actually worn it during the spring and summer months because it is a somewhat newer product so I'm not 100% sure how it's going to react or how my skin will really react with this primer during the spring and summer. I honestly might need something a little bit more mattifying but I have to say every single foundation that I use with this primer goes on beautifully on top and wears beautifully throughout the day. Now as for foundations, this one was a little bit of a tough choice for me. I feel like I don't have a lot of favorite foundations and my absolute favorites are super full coverage. I don't wear a super full coverage foundation all the time, but in general when I wear foundation, it is full coverage. Otherwise I wear like a CC cream or I skip foundation altogether and just go in with concealer and kind of blend it all over my face. So I chose the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Liquid Foundation, which is a very full coverage foundation, but I figured if I could only choose one, this is the one that I would choose. It's like my go-to foundation. It works well during the winter time, the summer time, and again, if I really wanted to like sheer it out, I could always mix it with a moisturizer or just apply a really small amount. So for concealer, I actually have the same choice as Kelly. It is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer, and this one's actually brand new. It's in my collection waiting to be used, but I'm determined to finish up my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer before I use this one and open it up. So I'm almost finished with that one. I should be done with it by the end of the March. <laughs> By the end of the month, end of March, that's what I was going to say. The ColourPop concealer is my all-time favorite concealer. I feel like it just has the best consistency. It's a medium to buildable coverage concealer, so you can build it up and get more of a full coverage look, but honestly, you can also sheer it out so it's not super heavy looking. And on days when I don't want to wear a heavy foundation like the Urban Decay All Nighter, I'll actually take this concealer and just kind of apply a little bit all over my face and blend it in. And a little bit goes a super long way and your skin is evened out but it also looks radiant and a little bit more natural and then last face product before I move on to blush bronzer and highlight I would definitely have to choose the Kat Von D lock it powder foundation as my powder option I love this because you can use it as a powder foundation so you don't have to apply any liquid foundation underneath and it gives a pretty good coverage so I feel like that would be really nice to have in my collection if I didn't have any other powders but you can also use it to set your foundation into 
place. So I could pair it with the ColourPop concealer if I just used a small amount of this, or I could pair it with the Urban Decay All Nighter if I wanted a super full coverage look. I love this powder so much, and you guys, I'm on the hunt for a dupe because I don't like spending this amount of money on a powder like every other month, but I haven't found anything that works as well as this. So I will keep spending the money on it as long as I use it and love it, and I do. I've repurchased this probably like four or five times at this point, and I just think it's amazing. So I would definitely choose this as my one powder. Okay, moving on to blush, bronzer, and highlight. Let me start with highlight. I have been in love with highlighters lately, so this was kind of a hard choice for me. I went through my collection and I was like, do I want a pink toned highlighter, a gold highlighter, more of like a champagne or opal highlighter? So I did choose the Becca Cosmetics Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal. I feel like if I could only keep one highlighter in my collection, it would be this one. This one just goes really well with whatever makeup look I'm wearing, whether it's more of like a neutral look or a colorful look, if it's a smoky eye, a little bit more natural. I also feel like it could double as an eyeshadow if I want a little bit of a shimmery lid. So I just love this formula. I love this color. It's a very reliable highlighter. I never kind of question of whether or not I should use it, you know, after I have all of my makeup done because usually highlight is like my last step. I feel like if I'm kind of unsure about which highlighter I should use, I reach for this one because it's my go-to. So this is the one that I would choose. As for bronzer, I don't have a ton of bronzers that I love. I love the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I've been using the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. But my number one bronzer, again, if I could only choose one, would have to be the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Capri Coast. Kelly also mentioned this product in her video. I think she wears a different shade, but she mentioned that she likes this one just a little bit better than the Butter Bronzer, and I feel the exact same way. I love the Butter Bronzer so much. The price is right, it smells so good, it blends beautifully, but there's something about the Becca Cosmetics Sunlit Bronzer that's just a little bit better, so I would have to choose this one. I hit pan on it, I'm going to finish it up this year and I will repurchase it. I think I'll have to kind of work through a couple in my collection before I do repurchase it, but it's so good. It's such like a beautiful, natural looking bronzer on the skin and I just don't want to be without it. It is my favorite. I chose the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Mood Exposure. I think this color is so beautiful and it goes really well no matter what type of makeup look I'm wearing and I love the Hourglass formula. It's just so subtle and smooth and beautiful and it makes your cheeks look airbrushed and rosy. I don't think I could go wrong with this one. So that's all her face products. Let's move on to eye products. So let me actually start with two products that I currently do not have in my collection. They are products that I love. They're kind of like staples for me, but I'm really working hard to finish up some other products before I repurchase them. So if I could only choose one mascara, it would be the Essence Lash Princess Fall Slash Effect Mascara. It makes my lashes thick and voluminous and full and long and it separates them and I feel like I don't ever have a bad lash day when I wear that mascara. I don't currently have it in my collection. I thought I had a backup in my drawer, but like I said, I'm kind of working through a bunch of products and trying to use them up before I repurchase some of my favorites. But if I had to get rid of everything and only keep one, that is the one mascara that I would choose. And same thing with eyeliner. I don't have this one in my collection, but it is the one that I would choose. It's the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. I don't think I'm cheating by choosing one that's not currently in my collection because if I could only choose one product, product to wear, that is the one that I would choose. I'm currently using the Physicians Physicians Formula Liner, which I feel like is a really good alternative. It's actually a dupe for the Kat Von D liner, but I just like the Kat Von D liner a little bit better. I feel like for the price, I would probably repurchase the Physicians Formula one if I wanted to save a little money, but if I was only going to choose one liner to wear, it would be Kat Von D. I just feel like it's so black and precise, and when I'm doing liquid liner, I just want it to be really easy and effortless and dramatic, and that's what I get with the Kat Von D liner. I feel like choosing one eye eyeshadow palette was so difficult because I don't even use like one eyeshadow palette per day. I usually reach for like two or three, sometimes four eyeshadow palettes to create one look. So it was kind of hard to like narrow it down to only choosing one palette. So I chose the Too Faced Sweet Peach eyeshadow palette. And I don't know if this is my favorite palette of all time. I feel like that is such a hard question for me. I don't know if I could even narrow it down to like my top five favorites. I need like 10. I think I could narrow it down to like my top 10 because I do love 
love so many, but this one kind of satisfies like all of my different eyeshadow needs. And I do love the formula. I love the colors. If I wanted a really like nice and easy, natural everyday look, I could go in with some of these shadows. There are some darker smoky shadows if I wanted something a little bit more dramatic like this shade and then some fun purples. And then you do of course get all of your warm tone shadows and there's like a green, some corals. So no matter what type of eyeshadow look you're going for, you're going to be able to create it with this look. Unless you want like a cool toned neutral look, then this probably isn't the palette for you. But I tend to love warm shadows. So I feel like, you know, if I had to choose one palette, I really could get away with using this palette every single day. Okay, and then finishing up, I only chose two lip products. So I chose a lipstick and a lip gloss. As for the lipstick choice, I chose the ColourPop Lippy Stick in the shade Aquarius. I do like a good dark lip or a good red lip, but you know, honestly, if I could only wear one lipstick, it would have to be a nude just because I feel like it goes with every single makeup look. And Aquarius is the best color ever. I feel like it goes with warm looks and cool looks. It's just the most beautiful, flattering nude for my skin tone. So I am in love with it. I love the formula. I feel like it stays in place pretty well for like a traditional cream lipstick, but it's also not drying or uncomfortable. So I would be so happy with this lipstick. And then the lip gloss that I would choose is the Buxom Full On Lip polish in the shade Dolly. This is my favorite lip gloss ever and truthfully I could probably get rid of all of my lip glosses today and be happy with this one because it's really the main lip gloss that I wear. I feel like I have to have this one when I'm either like going out of town or I'm throwing lip products into my bag. Okay guys that is the end of my video. I had a lot of fun chatting with you guys about this hypothetical situation if I had to only choose one product in my collection or I guess like one product from each category. It was really fun to kind of, you know, narrow it down. So I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments below which products you would choose, but like think practically. Don't just choose your absolute favorites. Of course, I did in some categories, but you know, I think it's even more interesting if you choose a product that's not necessarily your favorite because then you have to explain the reasoning behind it. So I hope you guys share your answers in the comments below. Again, make sure to check out Kelly's channel because you guys will love her so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.